Welcome to the Video Dictionary, where we explore the language and the words we use every day. This is going to be a good one. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of fun reactions. There are lots of different, seems to be a lot of different definitions for the word floating around these days, but I've settled on one that I think is fit most of the uses. Socialism, noun. A theory or system of economic organization in which the means of production, trade, exchange, and the labor force are all owned by either the government or collectively among the entire populace. History and etymology. Let's start with the root of the word socialism. Social. Even in French, where the word socialism originated, the root comes from the Latin word soci. The Soci were an autonomous tribe and city-state that existed around Rome prior to the first century BC that were allies of Rome. In fact, the word Soci meant ally. But in everyday use, the word could also mean associate or partner, or even spouse. In the first century BC, one of Rome's allies decided that its people needed to have the same rights as Roman citizens, or have complete Roman citizenship. This is how the social war began, which ended with a genocide and nearly all of Rome's allies being granted citizenship. Kind of a foreshadowing of things to come from the words born from Soki. Eventually, the Roman Empire stretched all over Europe, and the Roman language, or a variant of it, spoken by regular people, generally referred to as vulgar Latin, was spoken all over. And by the 14th century, the word soci had become the word social in French, meaning living with others, united, or even marriage. In 1832, a French social reformer named Pierre Leroux claims to have coined the word socialism to describe the philosophy of Henri de Saint-Simon. Later, St. Simone would be branded a utopian socialist by Marx and Engels, but his socialism seemed different from theirs in a couple of ways. His philosophy focused on the productive class, including everyone that contributed to the economy, from laborers to bankers, and focused on their struggles against what he called the idle class, or the lazy, or politicians. He wanted a society that rewarded merit, and was planned by the best and brightest among us. His idea was rule over men would be replaced with the administration of things. Initially, his version of socialism seemed a lot like Ayn Rand with its focus on merit and its antagonism towards the parasitical classes. But the word socialism itself was selected because of the philosophies antipathy towards individualism. What his system did was distribute power unevenly to the most capable, but resources evenly among the people. For a long time, the word socialism was a synonym for cooperative, mutualist, or associationist, and it was adopted by many different groups and philosophies. Even from the very beginning, and St. Simone's vision of socialism, the idea was that the individual didn't own, or couldn't own, the means of production. Individuals couldn't really own any significant property, because that would be unfair to the rest of the society, the rest of the people in the collective, the social. The leaders in St. Simone's society would have control over the things. They would administer the things, but not the people somehow. Now, eventually, in 1888, Marx was using the words socialism and communism more or less interchangeably. And it was Marx's idea that even people like bankers and the people that commanded everything, weren't the people that should be controlling the means of production. It should be the people that used it themselves. Not the experts, but the people that 
use the equipment all the time. And these, this was the proletariat, the people that, the lower classes, the laboring class. And this was the inspiration for the Bolshevik re Revolution in 1917, after the Bolshe Bolshevik Revolution, the word socialism was differentiated as a stage of transition between capitalism and communism. Communism being the stateless society where all the means of production are owned collectively amongst the people. And all of the different flavors of socialism are just variations on that. It's not who controls what, that's already decided. The people themselves, the group, control the means of production. The, di the disagreement is who calls the shots. In Soviet socialism, it was a leader at the top. Same with the Chinese, it's a group of leaders at the top. And in democratic socialism, everything is decided democratically by voting as people. Now that can be done at different levels. It can be done at the level of a co-op or at the level of the nation. But either way, this takes away the agency of the people that produce things. They're not allowed to trade their labor for whatever they want. They have to trade their labor for whatever the group tells them they can trade their labor for. And now the primary definition of socialism that scares people that grew up or were alive during the Cold War is essentially Soviet socialism. The control over the means of production by a central ruling class that represents the people. But recently there has been a slight shift in the definition of socialism, at least in the minds of Americans. And I think this was primarily popularized during the 2016 presidential campaigns. Bernie Sanders introduced the idea of what he called democratic socialism. And he mentioned Denmark and other Nordic nations as examples of this democratic socialism. Now, these claims were quickly dispelled by the prime minister of Denmark at the time and told everyone in the world that Bernie Sanders was wrong and that the Nordic model was a heavy welfare state with a very free, very open, and very unregulated economy, making heavy use of free market mechanisms. Now, the Democratic Socialists of America website clearly states that they are completely opposed to the market economy, unlike the Nordic states, and they only accept very few elements of markets when they are absolutely necessary for the success of socialism. This is a stark contrast with the Nordic countries. And even in some cases, these Nordic countries have even low, lower regulations than the United States and freer markets than the United States. But when it comes down to it, Socialism, either way, comes down to greater society owning and controlling the means of production. And ultimately, the basic unit of the means of production is an individual human being. Socialism comes down to who owns you. Prescription and Commentary the word socialism is a tough one, because some people use the word socialism simply to mean people helping people. But really, this only describes the goal of what socialism is, and doesn't even touch upon the mecha mechanism it prescribes. And I think this is where arguments about socialism between, you know, capitalists and socialists, I think that's where the conversation falls apart. When someone like me argues that 
socialism is a bad idea, we're immediately confronted with, but you must hate other people because you don't want to help them. Because in the minds of the people promoting socialism, socialism simply means helping. But that's not all that it means. It means much more than that. It describes how the helping should be done. It says that you don't own the fruits of your labor. Everyone does. When someone says, from each according to his ability, to each according to his need, it makes it blatantly clear. You don't own what you're able to produce. The people that need it do. Now, it sounds nice. But what that means is even the people that are in need, if they can work their way up and out of that, they don't get to keep what they've worked for. Now, like I mentioned before, socialism describes who controls the means of production. Is it the individual or is it the group? Socialism says the group owns the means of production. But when you think about it, what really is the basic unit of the means of production? I mean, really. What produces things? Is it... I mean, what is like the basic thing that is produced by humans? I mean, even the word labor. You can, you can see where I'm going with this. Humans produce humans. So when you're talking about controlling the means of production on the most basic and fundamental level, who is the means of production? And then it comes down to, is it okay for another human or group of humans to own other humans? The United States fought a war over this. We fought a war that says it's wrong for one human or even multiple humans to own any other humans. We decided that that was wrong. And anyone that tells you otherwise, that it's okay for one human to own another or even multiple humans to own another, they're on the losing side of that conflict. They're on the losing side of history. So, when it comes down to it, who owns you? I can tell you who owns me. It's me. Thank you for watching. I know I'm probably going to get a lot of grief for this one, this video, but I'm glad I made it. So, if you've enjoyed, please click, click like. If you disagree with me, you can feel free to click the other button. And please, share this video with your friends, whether you agree with me or not. If you don't, ridicule me. If you do, thank you. And if you enjoy exploring the English language, please subscribe to my channel. And you can visit my website, Lexicacographer, link down in the down below, for more information on how you can help support the program. And until next time, keep on learning.